Matthew, Mark, Luke chapter 1, verse 39. Luke chapter 1, verse 39. I said to you Sunday, I talked to you that it, it is so important to connect with right people. To have those connections. And when God wants to bless you, he's going to send a person. When God wants to bless you, he's going to send a person. Somebody going to walk into your life It's going to bless you. In the next few weeks, as a matter of fact, into September, Sister Lori and I will be going up to Utah. Utah. You, you, that sounded funny. Uh, Utah. Uh, Utah up there and, uh, to visit with her mom and dad and sister and brother-in-law uh, on their new pilgrimage because they're, they're in their mid-80s and up. And then we're going to go from there up to Northern California and preach for Bob Oots. And many of you know that two years ago that, that Bishop Bob Oots, I called him Bishop Bob because it, it aggravated him because he, he doesn't consider himself that. I heard his guys calling him Bob. And I said, that, that ain't Bob. That's Pastor Bob or Bishop Bob. And then they all began to change and work on him. And, uh, but what a crew. They came down 20-something strong from North, Cal uh, North uh, California, helped us rebuild our uh, campus, worked with us for uh, two weeks. and great. But there was a connection. How was that connection made? Well, it was made through a guy named Dallas who came out and did sheetrock on my house. I met Dallas in Bible college. And so all these connections, your connections, it's, it's the people you connect with. And I know it hurts some people's feelings when I say something like this, but you've got to connect. I, I, I know many of us are kind of grounded to being hermits and sitting back. And, and some folk, it's real easy for them to talk and be out there amongst people, right, Dana? Amen. It's not a problem. But for some of us, it's a push to get out there and do it. But, it, but those connections, if God's going to bless you, he's going to do it through someone. Somebody's going to come into your life and, and bless you. The ability, and listen to me, you, all of us were connected for, uh, uh, created for connection. And rarely will a stranger have the ability to deter you or stop you. But a friend can't. Or somebody comes into your life that you're connected with. The people you're connected to are either going to stretch your vision or they're going to choke your dream. And not everyone has a right to speak into your life. You know, there are times that people have a negative thing about me, but they never speak into my life. They're not somebody I even give room for. So you've got to be careful who it is that speaks into your life and who you share with. And again, the scripture is full of. We talked about this today on the way out to lunch. I do not think that David, King David, when he was young, and Jonathan the prince... Uh, Saul's son, there was any homosexual tendency with them at all. The Bible says they loved each other. And it may be hard for some for uh, uh, women to understand this, but there's a love that men can have for one another that is not sexual in nature at all. We may slap one another on the rear end. We may talk to each other kind of strange and funny, but there's nothing other than a, than a strong brotherly love there. And, and, I, I, and the reason I'm saying it because I am a brother. I don't know all about ladies and their feelings, but I can tell you about us guys. We, I've had some really close men that, that have been close to me. Uh, I remember when Carlos Bertigas was murdered on 610. Somebody shot through his truck. I cried like I've never cried before. And I thought I didn't cry that way for my dad or, or my sister or others. And I love them very much. They, they're very close to me. But, man, there was something about that brother. He was my brother. You know, there was a connection that we had and we made. And Jonathan David had that kind of connection. Everybody say connection. So now we got a story about a young girl by the name of Mary who's probably 15 or 16 years of age. And you can imagine being the vulnerability, the vulnerability of being that age. You remember this, ladies, back when you were young like that? And all of a sudden an angel shows up and tells her that she's going to have the Christ child. And she's, she don't know what to do with that. Well, before that happened, five months before then, God showed up to a man praying in the, in the temple. And he said to that man, he said, sir, your wife, Elizabeth, is going to have a baby. And he argued and said, now, we're a little bit old, kind of laughed like uh, Abraham did. And, and uh, God said, no, it's going to happen. Shut his mouth until the baby was born so that he wouldn't give out a doubt or anything like that. So now Elizabeth, the cousin of Mary, is five months pregnant. Now, here's the thing. There's no email. There's no text messaging. There's no phone. There's no other way to reach out to each other other than this. And this is what we miss today, this connection. And I'm going to preach it as long as I'm alive here with you. I, I don't mind texting. I don't mind emails. I don't mind phone calls. But this right here is important. I see your eyes. I see your intent. I, I know you. I can touch you. I know you're my friend. And Mary, when she got the news, she got excited. And she went running. Everybody say connection. connection. Amen. There's a reason why we're connected. There's a reason for that. So when she goes running into the house, there you go. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town. She hurried. I mean, she put some speed on it in the, in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. Why didn't she say anything to Zachariah? Because he couldn't say nothing back. 
right? His mouth is shut. He can't say. So she's going to talk. Some of you women have been praying, and God, shut your husband's mouth. But it can happen. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she explained, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you'll bear. But why am I so favored? Why am I? Would you say that with me? Why am I so favored? If you will live like you're favored, you will be favored. I've said for years that favor is not fair. Amen. But when it happens, it happens. And if, you don't, if you're not favored, hang out with people who are. Be, be among those who are favored all the time. That's something about that. So she said, why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to, to, come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that, that the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. And that's important. Blessed she has believed in what God, in other words, that God said to you is going to happen. This is important in your life. This is called faith. When God says something's going to happen in your life, you've got to keep believing for it. Whether it be healing, whether it be uh, relational, financial, whatever it is, you've got to hang on to that. And keep the breaking of addiction, I'm going to just hang on to that. The scripture says she hurried. She took off. Mary got ready, and she hurried. She dressed herself up in whatever the fire. And she, again, she's 15, 16 years of age. She's young. And now she's, she's pregnant with a, with a Christ child, but she had to tell somebody. You know, very, very few women who, who uh, have prayed and believed God for favor and they get pregnant, they're not going to keep that a secret. Mm-mm, not in this day and age. They're going to share it with somebody. And she had to get out and she ran and she wanted to connect with somebody who believed in her. The worst thing you want to do is tell a blessing in your life somebody don't believe in you. They don't care about it. They don't care that you got a good job. They don't care that you met somebody kind and wonderful. You will never be all that God has called you to be until you get away from those who hold you back and get to those you are assigned to. When God assigns you to people, connects you with a group of people, that's a powerful thing. Mary had to get to her connection. Connection is where two things are fastened together through relation. In other words, we've got a relation, a relationship, so we're fastened together. That is connection. When, when you are pregnant with destiny, there's no time to delay. You have to get into connection. And one of the things I found out for 26 years of pastoring, I run around with people that are connectors. I want to be with somebody that's going to promote my destiny, promote this house, bless the people in this house. So when, I, when I'm around somebody, I'm always looking for that connection. I ain't got time, and you don't have time to be with people that's going to suck the life out of you. Amen. So you want to connect with people that's going to promote you and bless you, bless your business, bless your life, do things for you. Why Elizabeth? Mary had something to offer her. She entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. The word salute means to enfold in the arms or to embrace. Mary came to confirm uh, Elizabeth with an embrace. The thought is, no one else believes in me because, not because, but because you do. Ain't that like having a relative that believes in you? Because you believe in me. You are aware. And by the way, look at the difference of the age. Now, we don't know how old Elizabeth was, but she's owned up in age to the point where Zachariah thought she was unable to conceive. And we got Mary, who's a very young virgin. And yet, in that discrepancy of age, there was a connection made. Don't tell me that somebody is too old for you to get along with. Don't tell me, uh, elderly, that you can't get along with some of these young people in here that need your touch. Amen. They need a salute from you too. They need a hug from you. When we do that meet and greet, touch them, greet them, love them. Amen. Care for them. You'll impart something into their life. It's important to realize, oh, I, ain't, I'm, I ain't got no more kids no more. I don't want. Amen. Well, welcome to church. Amen. It takes a whole, uh, whole tribe to raise a kid, don't it? Amen. It takes a lot of folk to help them out. You receive the gift of leadership. Amen. And a blessing to serve others. A tree doesn't bear fruit to eat of its own fruit. Be a blessing to others. You are aware this gift I carry. That's what she said. It's from God and it's to be shared with the world. I got to tell somebody, this Christ child, Jesus here. You know, you're not assigned to those who tolerate you. You're assigned to people who celebrate you. There are times, even in, your, in our parental areas... Sue, we just had a little conversation about this. There are times in our parental areas of life, we feel like our kids just tolerate us. I can't deal with that. Get on out the house. I want to be around somebody that celebrates me. Right. Amen. That thanks the world to me. That's what, and until you can figure that out, then when you do, come back and let's get, let's get together. I, I want to be around celebration. Even as a pastor, I know of churches where people just tolerated the preacher. And the preacher just tolerated the people. 
You will never celebrate what you don't, what you tolerate. If you're just tolerating something all the time, you're not going to celebrate it. So eventually you've got to get to a place in life where you celebrate, amen, where you're excited about this. It, it, not just pats on the back, but I believe in you. I believe in your gift. I believe that God called you. I believe God favored you. This was Elizabeth's salute to, to Mary. The result was, in verse 41, and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. She gave audience. She heard. She didn't just listen. She heard it. It came down inside. How many know you can listen and ain't hearing? You come to church. You listening. But you ain't hearing. It ain't in there. I preached a whole message Sunday morning about being self-centered, bitter, and upset. And there in that church was somebody upset, self-centered, and bitter. And never caught a word I said. Missed it. They listening, but they ain't hearing. You got to catch this. I'm not trying to be mean, just trying to preach the word. The word is the word is the word. So, and I, so I don't change my sermon, but this was hard. I don't change the sermon just because you showed up. You hear me? There's times I got ready to preach and somebody walked into church and oh, dear God. What am I going to do with this now? You know, here comes here come Sister Gossip, or Brother Bitter, you know, and they come up in the house, and I hear my word laying there, I go, well, Jesus, let it fall where it fall. It didn't matter. They weren't listening. <laughs> they didn't hear it. Hey, man, they didn't catch it. She heard. The baby leaped, leaped, uh, quickening, leaped for joy. Hey, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Now, I want you to do me two favors real quick. It's going to be very quick, so pay attention. First, I want you to jump. Okay. Now, I want you to leap. You see the difference? All right, hold, hold on. She didn't say the baby jumped in my womb, jump. She said the baby leaped. The baby went from the kidney to the liver. Amen. From the bottom to the top. It didn't just jump, it leaped. There's a big difference in your life. The Bible don't say jump for joy, it said leap for joy. Leaping for joy will take you out of A and get you into B. Leaping with joy will get you out of the kitchen, get you in the living room. Didn't say jump, said leap. Thank you, Travis. You can go sit down. You follow what I'm saying here? The baby leaped inside her. I mean, it made a commotion. It jumped from one side. It leaped from one side to the other. It didn't just go up and down. It, it did some moving there. There's something about that. Mary had something to get from her. The Scripture says she was filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, this is controversial here. The Bible don't say she spoke in other tongues. The Bible says when that baby, when they met, she was filled with the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you, when you got born again, God put the Holy Ghost in you. He called the Spirit and put it in. Now, I do believe in filling and refilling. I believe there's something supernatural at times that God will come on. And, 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 and listen, and I believe in speaking in tongues. I've been speaking in tongues 30, 40 years now. But the bottom line is, it's not the thing that drives me. If, if speaking in tongues makes you self-righteous, you didn't get the Holy Ghost. Uh, and this is important. This, the Spirit of God filled her. What, what is the evidence of being filled with the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness. If you don't have the fruits, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, he said, well, I don't speak in tongues, but do you have love, joy, peace? Because this is what happened in my life. I, I, I realized I was forgiving people. I was loving people. I had peace. I, all these things. Where did all that come from in this, this storm of, of a young man that I was? It was the Spirit of God. So here in her, the Scripture says the baby leaped, and she was filled. She was fulfilled. She was furnished. There was something good that happened in her life. Mary had something to get from her. The salutation to draw out when she, when she saluted her. She not only came to put something into Elizabeth, she came to get something out. And she spake in verse 42 with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. She spake with a voice that was loud. She, she was, in other words, authoritative. She's not her sister so much as she probably helped raise Mary. She's like a grandma who's a cousin who's probably uh, 50, 60 years older than Mary. So she spoke as an elder or with authority in her life. And she looked at her and she confirmed. Confirmation is a powerful thing. 
When you confirm something, it becomes an affirmation to you. And she confirmed to her, that which is inside you is of God. Amen. That, that's the holy one inside of you. And she said, blessed is the fruit of your womb. Girl, you don't, you don't realize how blessed you are. She spake with this authority. She gave a word of knowledge. She blessed, you know, you, blessed are you, blessed in the fruit, of, uh, the fruit of your womb. Blessed, highly favored, prosperous are you. And blessed, verse 45, and blessed is she that believed. And there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Performance means a, a completion and verification. God's going to verify what's blessed in you. Now, I look back on this day, and I realize what a blessing it was to be a mother. And then 33 years later, to see the son you loved hanging on a cross, sinless, and knowing. And, and there are times in your life, you've got to hear me. That God gave you a word. It might not have been through this preacher, but it might have came through somebody else, or it might have come through a text or something you saw on social media, but it was a word to you. And you've got to hang on to that word. Because there are dark days that are coming. And you've got to look back on it and say, I remember God saying to me that Jesus the Christ was inside me. And this is Mary talking. And you've got to look back in your own life and say, I remember when God told me that, I, that my life, I would go over, not under. Amen. That he had begun a good work in me. and He would complete it until the day of his coming. I got to go back in my life and look back. Because there's going to come a day you might find you Jesus hanging on a cross. And it's going to be dark. It's only going to be dark for 72 hours. Amen. But you've got to remember it. I've held on to Acts 16, 31. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your household will be saved. I hung on to that until my mom and dad got saved. My sister got saved. My brother got saved. And now that I've already done the funeral of my dad and my sister, you know what a, a blessing and a comfort that I believed and held on to that. Look at that scripture again. And blessed is he, is she that believed. For there shall be, uh, oh, 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 where did you go? Hey, where, back where it was. Sorry, Mike. I'm going to walk back behind that pulpit. <laughs> and I'm online. These people watching me online. You know how long? They'll, they'll click off and go to another preacher if you don't get back to me. <laughs> now, go back one more. Blessed art thou among women. Never mind. I got it here. Oh, verse 45. And blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. In other words, God's going to do what he told you he's going to do. She had to hold on to that for 33 years, that God's going to perform. He's going to verify. He's going to make sure that even in my darkest day and looking down, and, I'm going to, and this is the, here's the honest truth for you guys. It's the same with me. This ain't going to happen 33 years from now. It'll happen this week. You'll forget what God has told you this week, and you're going to shake yourself and say, come on, remember the word of the Lord to me. And you've got to get hold of us, Psalm 107, and he sent his word and healed me. Amen. You've got to get hold of the word of Psalm 133, where brothers dwell together in unity, there I'll command a blessing. You've got to get hold of a word. Amen. You say, but pastor, I've been tithing for years. Well, get back into Malachi and say, God, I know you're going to rebuke the canker worm. You're going to deal with the locusts. You're going to drive all that away. You're going to bless because I've been a seed sower. I've been sowing seed into the lives. You give it to me. I've been blessing others. There ain't nothing like the ability to bless up. It's the same way with, again, like I said, Sunday with forgiveness. Forgiveness is not about them. It's about me. If I can forgive, it sets me me free if I can give it blesses me there's something about knowing that and you hang on to that word you've been given and given and given it's time for a return you got to remind yourself and remind God verify this take, take care of that I've stood on this I stood on this when this church didn't have no money you didn't know we didn't have any money I stood on it I walked in this pulpit and said God I'm still going to preach by faith that it's going to happen the good things are going to happen and it's going to happen and I see it happening you have to stay with it you got to keep on pressing into it so what is the right connection what is the right? Everybody say I'm connected. Amen. Amen. What's the right? Ephesians 4, 16. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by which every joint supplies. Now, I'm, I may get on this on Sunday. But you supply to me and I supply to you. Joints that supply. If the joint quits supplying, it gets cut off. It gets amputated. So it's important to understand when I'm reading Scripture, what's he saying here? According to the effectual working in the measure of every part makes increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. The Living Bible says it like this. Instead, we will lovingly follow the truth at all times, speaking truly, dealing truly, living truly, and so become more and more in every way like Christ, who is the head of his body, 
the church, under his direction, the whole body is fitted together perfectly. And each part in its own special way helps the other parts so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Now, Paul says this in Ephesians. But when he's talking to the church at Corinth, he said, the eye can't say to the ear, I don't need you. The nose can't say to the mouth, I don't need you. The mouth surely can't say to the nose. Because God put the nose right over the mouth so you can smell what you fix and eat. What if God would have put your nose under your arm? Huh? What if he'd have done that? And every time you eat a hamburger, you go. <laughs> God didn't do that. He put, he fit. When you're looking at yourself, you need to understand you are the body of Christ. Is that, is that good, Cheryl? We'll give you one more. You ready, Cheryl? Write this down. Why is it their mouse flavored cat food? Just curious. Just curious. Okay. Where's that phone? <laughs> supplies. We supply. The joints supply one another. A contribution. We minister nourishment to other connections. Elizabeth was supplying nourishment to Mary. She was looking. At, you know, Elizabeth didn't look at her and go, all right, girl, who knocked you up? Hello? Where did you go to get in trouble like this? How did you get yourself pregnant? You know, Joseph ain't never going to marry you out of Whitlock. She didn't do any of that. She immediately confirmed that that which was in her was from God. Why? Because she herself was walking with a little miracle. She had a little bump inside of her. Who was that jumping around? It, it wasn't Jesus jumping. It was J.B. Yeah, John the Baptist, the first Baptist, when it started all in Baptist churches. I know. Yeah, that guy. It was John. It was John doing the leaping. That's where the miracle was taking place, right there. And, and, and so she's walking with her own miracle. Listen, when you've had a miracle, it's easy, easy to confirm somebody else's miracle. When other people look at you and go, I, 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 don't, I don't believe that. But, man, if you've seen God do stuff, that's why I don't sit back and go, I don't believe that. I've seen too much crazy stuff. I've seen God do too many, too many cool things. I know that God can turn churches around, turn business around, turn couples around, re re reunite marriages. I've seen God do. I've seen the prodigal come home. I've seen crazy stuff happen in the body of Christ. I, I've seen cancer destroyed. I've seen diabetes, people getting delivered from that. I've seen so many things take place. Amen? Amen. Huh? Pat, Pat, Pat on the stage. Amen. Play, playing the uh, uh, bass guitar now. He was dead this time last year. Double brain aneurysm, boom, he's up. So when you had your miracle, and this tells me this, I'll say this to you all the time. You need to celebrate other people's blessing until your blessing gets here. Yeah. Amen. You've got to keep honoring God till, till yours shows up. You, you can't just quit on that. You can't get better because somebody else got blessed. Amen. Amen. You need to be blessed because they got blessed. So I'm connected for a reason. Say it with me. I'm connected for a reason. I'm connected, man. When I look back on, I was just telling, you know, it was through an email. I got connected with Joseph. David. I preached for a guy named Jimmy. I met a guy named Tony Miller who introduced me to David and, and his little wife, Tony, before there were three. Huh? It was all connections. I'm connected for a reason. You know, I, I just, I always just look forward to who am I going to get connected to next? How, how's gonna, God going to supply into this house? He's going to do it through connections. Pastor Mike, I got connected through a voice. I heard his voice at a youth camp in 1991. When I heard him yelling with that big German voice and, and something, and the Holy Ghost jumped inside me like my baby jumped. Uh-uh, baby leap, woo-hoo, amen. And said, now that man is always going to be your pastor. 1991, and he's always been my pastor. Talk to him on Sunday. He's, he, we, we, we got this camaraderie with each other. We can say things to each other that nobody else can say to us. Don? He's the only man I know that once called me big, dumb, stupid idiot. It's a true story. I had a green truck. Don was in the back seat, and, and Don, Pastor Mike was up front. I was bringing him back down here, and he had a big old bucket full of goodies. Had his wife left, or Lori may have made it for him. Hey, man, I forget. A big old bucket uh, down there, and I watched him. He's got that big head. You ever watch, say, Pastor Mike? Before he gets here, let me just say, he got a great big head. Hey, Amen. Big old bald head, you know. And, and so he was trying to stick his head down under there, reaching down to get the, something out of that bucket, and he just barely got his old bald head up underneath that dash. And by the time he did, I slammed on the brakes, and I wedged him down up under there like that. And he was, and he was yelling, "Hey, you big dumb stupid idiot!" 
never forgot it. I've not, not, Don never forgot it. J Bo never forgot it. Well, they laugh so hard because they never heard anybody call me that. But he has a right to do that. He's my pastor. But it all came through connection. You know, I met David Huff. Watch what was fixing to happen. We got a, we got a conference coming with Bishop Gary McIntosh, uh, uh, Mike Van Britson, and David Huff. Where did I meet David Huff? With Pastor Mike Van Britson. That's where I met David Huff. Wow. These, this is kingdom connections. It's, it's not just a, a, a statement. Or it, it's, 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 it's life. It's how we live through connection and you think in your life how did you get connected one of the things i will ask you you know this if i get to know you a little while i'm going to ask you how did you get here how'd you get connected here what brought you here that's always a connection somehow some way john tells us that that this is why we're connected by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have loved one to another that's how i know we're connected because you've got you love one another romans 12 9 love must be sincere so if i love one another what is love love must be sincere Hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in brotherly love, honor one another above yourselves. Sunday, I mentioned to you, you got to love, love, God, uh, love God, uh, as your neighbor. What's it say? As your neighbor. Love yourself as you love your neighbor. That's harder to realize, you know, that, you know, good fences make good neighbors. That's not Bible. Uh, it's, but I, I'm not against fences if you've got a dog. Don't matter if you got what you got. If you got a cat, they're gonna go anywhere they want. But the uh, the thing with that is is learning how to love. So the scripture tells us, and you you know as I do, this is hard. It's hard because it's easy to love yourself sometimes, but it's kind of tough to reach over and cross the fence and bring a omelet over to your neighbor, you know, or something. I've, I'm sure it'd be leftovers. Hate, hate, hate what is evil. Evil, the word in the Greek is mischief, malice, vicious, or that thing which causes harm. Cling to what is good. Cling, cleave, glue, connect. Amen. Keep company with. Proverbs 18, 24, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. If you want connections, you've got to connect. And there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Stick. It doesn't mean smother. Catch this. To have a friend doesn't mean smother. If you smother, you run them away. It has the opposite effect. Amen. You've got to want people who want you. Like I said, I'm not trying to be mean, but you need to want people who want you to be around. But you can't just smother people. Amen. You've you got to be connected to them. To be devoted to one another, which means very loyal, being faithful. We mentioned Sunday that loyalty is the measure stick of love. And we used the book of Ecclesiastes to share about that two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. The issue with people with addiction, a lot of times the shame of addiction will drive you away. And because you're away, you're alone. If you're alone, you're going to fall. But if I can find somebody who's been through it and got through it and connect with them, prayerfully I can come up. Right. Amen. I, I, got, I received a long letter since Sunday from, from a man who's gone through this very thing. Hope to meet him tomorrow night. But that's the thing. He just needs somebody there to help pick him up. Amen. To hold him up. And that's what we need to do as brothers and sisters to one another. Honor one another above yourself. In honor, preferring one another. Honor, value in the highest degree. You know, we've lost honor today. We don't honor our police. We don't honor our military. Well, I mean, we say some do in lip service, but as a rule, uh, we've lost honor with mom and dad. You know, and many times the scriptures honor your mother and father. They don't say whether they were good or bad. It doesn't say whether they were rattlesnakes, drug addicts, uh, uh, prostitutes, alcoholics. It just says honor them. And there's something, and I know there many of us, we didn't come up with great parents, but yet to, just to honor them does something for us. Amen. And because we sow that, I believe we'll reap that to honor one another, to care for one another, to value one another. Mary honored Elizabeth, amen, by bringing her into her circle. Mary could have kept that to herself and said, ah, I'm just going to run around with all my little teenage friends. Ah, ah, ah. But no, she took that gift to Elizabeth and honored her and told her, I wanted you to be the first to know. And Zachariah's over there going, his mouth don't open until John's born. Hello. Hey, man, the angel shut him down. Mm -hmm. That's New Testament, too. You'd think it still happened today. Mm -hmm. Let me close here. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. I thank my God every time I remember you. And all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ. There's something about knowing 
that what God started in you, it has nothing to do about your death. It has something to do with Christ coming again. Amen. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. Now I'm going to share with you a verse that Joseph shared with me today. And I'll be in first, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It won't be on the overhead. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Now, this is when Paul starts talking about reconciliation. Reconcile means that we had something between us and we dealt with it and became friends again. You follow? Reconcile. When Jesus died, God reconciled the world back to himself. In other words, the world wasn't reconciled to him. They, they, people were enmity. There was, there was, uh, they were enemies of God. But then all of a sudden when Jesus died, he reconnected. So yeah, Joseph has been teaching the youth here also about connections. So if I take the word reconcile out and put the definition connect, it would say this. All this is from God who connected us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of connection. That God was connecting the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of connection. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be connected to God. Be connected to God. God made him who had no sin to be sinned, for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Be connected to God. Stay connected. It's the same. It's John chapter 15. The vine and the branches. It's, it's all through scripture. Reconcile. Connect. Stay with one another. Don't, don't, don't slip away from one another. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Father I bless this house tonight. I thank you for the word of God. Ask your blessing to be upon the people as they leave here. We are connected to you for a reason. And that connection makes everything better. Lord, who do you have for us to connect with this week? Next week. Next month. Lord, let somebody walk into our lives that we can be a blessing to. Like Elizabeth was to Mary and Mary was to Elizabeth. There's a reason we're connected in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I forgot something that I need to talk to you all about. Uh, our, our kids are going to be going 